How are you doing? How was the with the family and stuff? Pretty good. Yeah, my sister came last week um, just to kind of check in and see how we were doing. Um, she rearranged our whole kitchen, which I actually asked her to do. Um, my sister is like an an organizing dynamo. No. All right. I've one time. I'm not naming names, but a while back I was dating a girl uh, and she visited and uh, she was hanging out at my place. I went to work and when I came back home, she had rearranged all my cables. Oh, no. Organized them. And it was it was very nice and very well done, but they were my cables. And I was just like, oh, th 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 thank you. <laughs> That's we asked her so to do nice. it because we have a pretty small kitchen and we have a lot of a lot of storage, but it's real weirdly shaped storage and it wasn't <laughs> efficient at all. And especially like with Dan being in chemo, we have a stockpile of protein shakes and this other like bone collagen stuff he has to drink. Um, How odd. Weirdly, weirdly shaped storage was my nickname in college. Um. Uh, and my sister like would make Marie Kondo look like an amateur. <laughs> So I actually asked her, and we were there the whole time. Like she didn't throw out anything without telling us. And she was actually super excited. Like she was more excited for that than like going up into the mountains and doing tourist stuff. Like she was like, really? You want me to, you want me to organize? You've never seen Red Dwarf. I know this, but there's a character on Red Dwarf named Crichton. And your sister is Crichton. And you don't understand this, but everybody in the comments Everybody watching right now was like, yeah, yeah, that's it. But it was actually a really huge help and she was super excited. So we have like a super efficient kitchen now, which is great. Um, and we also had a really nice visit. And my nephew is out in the New Mexico desert on a Boy Scout track, which is why they came out. Hmm. Um, he's been having a bear use poop and run his food up trees for bears to keep away from bears and stuff. That doesn't sound like fun to me. I don't not, know not why. to me either, but apparently he's having like the best time. Like my sister talked to him yesterday and she's like, he could not be happier, like digging holes to poop in. <laughs> like he, the kids part feral, I think. Um, All right. And yes, that is the nephew I used to live with. He got so big. Like, oh my God. He's friggin' enormous. He's like six feet tall. In my head, you know, I don't know if you have this phenomenon because you don't really have nieces or nephews but like if there are kids that you're related to at a certain point they just in your head they freeze at that yeah. age forever yeah and like i lived with him when he was nine so in my brain he is always nine except he's 16 and he's a tree how did that happen and he's out in the middle of the desert trekking around and burying his poop circle of life all right are you ready because yes i like uh, to write. Let's each week Catherine, radio dead air audience go out in the worldwide interwebs bring back a whole lot of horrible stuff something we like to call what the fuck is wrong with you and um they waited a week for you, Terry. At least they, they waited to report it. Um, oh, boy. It is, of course, the week after the 4th of July. And every year after the week after 4th of July, every fucking year. Now, I have a rule. Generally, we try to avoid stories where people get hurt. Yes. Um, I make some slight exceptions. Especially not hurting other people, that's not a good one. But when you hurt yourself doing something obviously stupid and dangerous that you've yeah. been told taught your entire life not to do. I lose yeah. I it, if you're just a dumbass, you lose the goodwill. There are two words that should not go in the same sentence unless you're speaking about a sex toy and we're not talking about a sex toy. Those words are groin and rocket. Oh. I they, mean, the groin rocket does sound like a legit sex toy. It does, but we are not talking 
about the groin rocket. We are talking about Wilkes bar man injured in groin. Come on. When igniting fireworks. Man from Wilkes bar was injured when he launched a rocket from his groin. According to a report. Police re reported they responded to a residence at Summit Drive in Mount Pocano to assist an ambulance call Pocono. due to Pocono, sorry. Uh, to assist an ambulance call due to a fireworks related injury. Officers observed a large gathering at the residence and aerial fireworks being discharged inside the residence. Antonio Gianelli suffered injuries and burns after he attempted to attempted to launch a rocket from his groin. Why would you do that? Antonio. Like we've all used that not really a cup holder when we're in a sitting position. Like we've yeah. all like jammed our drink in there for a minute or just put our phone between our thighs in the car. Like we've all done it. It's key to not do that with things that are on fire. That explode. Or combustible or both. Fireworks of all kinds, just about all of them, are gunpowder. They're fucking gunpowder. You are taking gunpowder and fire and you are putting it right next to your genitals. Yeah. You don't want to do that. It's a bad idea. No one is going to. It's know, not safe. You, you know this dude was look at me. Do, 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 my fire dick. And no one thinks you're cool. No one no. thinks you're funny. They're just looking at you like, oh, God, funny. Now, given the guy's name, what are our bets that it was a Roman candle? Oh, it's terrible. I'm just saying. That's terrible. <laughs> I also love that while they were showing up, officers observed a large gathering and fireworks being discharged. So after he'd set his groin on fire, everybody else just let that's too bad. And they went back to shooting illegal fireworks. Yeah. Wow, that sucks, man. <laughs> the fuck? Those are, those are some good friends you got, Antonio. Seriously. They're looking out for you. Like, if you if the party doesn't stop when your dick is on fire, those ain't your friends. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. Does the party really start until your dick's on fire? <laughs> <laughs> It depends. Do you need a fire extinguisher or penicillin? That's that's the original lyric from the Kesha song, I uh, think. Now the party don't start till my dick sound fire. It's not as catchy. I, it didn't scan right, so no. she had to change it. No. <sighs> don't. Every year we get these stories. Every fucking year after fuck. It's, I, you can't tell them nothing. We can't take you nowhere. No, just go and let the professionals do it. I don't even understand what the thrill is of setting off fireworks yourself because they're not that pretty. No, the the, ba the 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 home ones. It's like you know when when you go. I, I want McDonald's. We have McDonald's at home, and your mom makes it. Yeah, it's not she, the same. It's not the same. Just go and watch the professionals do something. Like it's going to be way prettier. Maybe you just like making loud noises, but stop. And also, your dick is not on fire unless they really fuck up. Your dick will not be on fire. In most cases at a professional like uh, fireworks show, yes, nobody's dick will be on fire. All right. Next up, Springfield, Massachusetts. There's always a Springfield. All over this country, there's Springfields. Sorry, um, I hear a cat around in here somewhere, but I don't know where. Okay, this, this is one of those where we're at a point in time where you can get away with wearing a mask. To do your nefarious yeah. shit. And no one's yeah. going to think you're suspicious. It is the perfect time to hide your identity to do nefarious shit. So, what the fuck, my dude? Springfield man arrested for shooting city cameras with paintballs. Police arrested a man for shooting city cameras. Fucking photographic evidence with paintballs yeah. on Saturday. 
According to police department spokesman Ryan Walsh, police were alerted the man had shot a city camera with a paintball gun. The man, later identified as 23-year-old Manuel Torres, was seen returning to the area. Following an alert to police, officers stopped him and placed him under arrest after finding a paintball gun in his car. Torres was charged two counts of defacement of property and two counts of violating a city ordinance for firing his paintball gun. You're shooting at a camera! Like, kudos to you for thinking to blind the camera. But, but until you blind it, it's still shooting. Like, it's it just, you could have, oh my yeah, God. You could have you covered your face and not looked at all suspicious. People would have just been like, oh yeah, this is, okay. Yeah, the vaccine, sure, that's fine. Yeah. But no, no, no. What, what were you like, doing? Did you wave and then shoot it? Why? Why were you shooting it with the paint? Were you just being like fucking, hey, I've got a paintball gun. Probably. I don't have anything to do with a paintball gun. I mean, it is Massachusetts. I'm going to shoot my paintball gun at something. But what? I've, I've come to find out that stuff like paintball guns, they're kind of, they're, they're, so, they're, they're an accident in search of something to fuck up. <laughs> It's not like a solution in search of a problem. It's an accident looking for something to fuck up is what a paintball gun is. It's once you have one, you're like, it's it. You're going to use it because you have a paintball gun. What are you going to do? Mean, Just I have friends that go to like paintball ranges and do like fake combat and stuff, and they seem to really enjoy it. They come home covered in welts, but they seem to enjoy that. OK, but Tara, what do you do if you have no friends? You that. go around and shoot cameras, I Apparently. guess. <laughs> uh, Super Mutant says, do you think the paintballs would erase the data on the camera? I don't know. Yeah, no, honey. That's not how that works. I thought they'd melt the camera. No, no. That doesn't Didn't work like that either. Uh, all right. Uh, next one. Pennsylvania. Oh. Uh, there's a, a phrase, a meme going around on Twitter. Um, they didn't understand the assignment. And that completely sums up our next story. Did not understand the assignment. Altoona Man steals nearly $2,000 in items from Dick's Sporting Goods store. Wait for us to get to the 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 the, the big part of it. Altoona Man is being accused of stealing nearly $2,000 worth of clothes and shoes from Dick's Sporting Goods store in Logan Town Center. According to the Logan Township Police Department, 36-year-old Matthew Robinson failed to pay for his items at the cash register. Robinson then proceeded to put the stolen merchandise into a vehicle, and he returned to the store to give back one of the items he didn't want. When confronted by employees about the theft, he fled the scene. You... You stole that! You... You can't... Like, just... Give it away? <sighs> My... Like, oh gosh, I didn't mean to steal this thing. I just meant to steal this other thing. Sorry about that. My bad. It's... What they, they all right? Most retail stores, if you're shoplifting, they are not allowed to confront you. No. So they probably, then you might no longer want to shoplift from them. So a bunch of them watched you walk out of the store with that shit, and then you came back. Yeah. You ain't like I don't. I've understand. never been. I've never been trained for that situation. Like, worked a lot of retail. They don't cover that one. RPGaholic. That is one hell of a dick move. Uh, <laughs> uh -huh. Little low hanging fruit there. Low hanging fruit. Yeah, like, they're not really, they're, like, I think I've talked about this before, <clears throat> like, recovery statements. Mm -hmm. Like, you say, oh, can I show you something to go with that t-shirt you've chosen? Let them know you, you know what they have, but don't accuse them of taking it. Like, they, it, it, shoplifters, you're not slick. You're just 
abusing the, the rules of retail. That's it. They see you. They know you, which, exactly what you're doing. A corporate would rather just let the merchandise go than deal with the potential lawsuit. Like, because you get mad that we accused you of stealing when you were stealing. Like, if you look around, it looks like the fucking uh, people are giving you a stink eye. They are! Yeah. They see you doing that shit. What was the item he returned? Uh, it doesn't say. I just... He... So it, I, I stole this in the wrong size. <laughs> that, uh... That sounds like uh, a you problem, sir. <laughs> they did catch his ass. He was on the surveillance video. They got his license plate. All goods were returned to the store. <sighs> All right. Um, oh, we have more fun with 911. All right. I will give this dude credit. He had a plan. He kind of thought it through. Um, I just, it, he, it was a two plus two equals five, but bless his heart, he tried. Oh, Hassanine, Ohio, and in phony 911 call caller. Uh, after getting pulled over outside Walmart. What, like, just graduated literature major wrote that headline? I don't know. What, like, douchebag fresh out of an MFA program I don't wrote that headline? After getting pulled over outside a Walmart in suburban Cleveland, a motorist sought to deter officers from the traffic stop by calling 911 to falsely report a shooting a few blocks from the retail. Oh, honey. He had a plan. He did. He, according to investigators, Muhammad Kabir, 34, was driving Saturday afternoon when his vehicle was pulled over. Kabir, who lives in nearby Cleveland Heights, was behind the wheel despite having a suspenders drive, suspended driver's license and a vehicle with expired plates. I've been there. Hmm. It, it sucks, but you gotta, oh. just, you gotta just suck it up. In a misguided effort to avoid a series of traffic citations, Kabir called in a fake 911 call of a male being shot. The gambit was intended to deter officers from the traffic stop. Instead, a police dispatcher was able to ping the caller of the 911 call back to Walmart, and the phone, one, a phone number of the 911 caller matched the mail that was on the traffic stop. You see, when you make a call on your cell phone, 911, it's not just, they're not like, oh, where are you, sir? They yeah. know where you, they're allowed to look at the cell phone cameras and triangulate your position and all that shit. They know they where, need to, because if you're dying and can't tell them where you are, right. they still have to find you. They're trying to, so they can see where you are. Yeah. Kabir was then arrested for making false alarm. See, all right, the suspended license and the, the license plate, you might be able to just get pulled over. We're taking your license. You can't drive your car home. Right. Blah, blah, blah. That's you what might. happened to me. And I had a court date and I had yeah. to fix all that shit. What it sucks, but you did that. You were a dumbass. I was a dumbass. So you have to deal with those consequences. But you calling in the fake shit. Now you're under arrest. Yeah. Now now you're under arrest, and that's no fun. Nobody likes under arrest. No. It you had a plan. It was just a really stupid plan. It was based on this old idea of the like the 911 caller with the, the plug on the switchboard. 911, right. what's your emergency? It's not like that. That's not that's not how it how it works. And like when cell phones were a new thing, it was a little like that. They had to ask you where you were because like, you know, but they have figured that out. We've had cell phones for a long time yeah. now and they have caught up to the technology. Uh, yeah, they, they know they know where the fuck you are. The greedy. Yes, he's yelling at, at you. He's yelling at Sarah, actually. Because I'm doing stuff, he's yelling at Sarah. Okay, so... Take this thing. It's so sad. I'm trying to do stuff. Okay. You sound so sad. Oh my god. Can you, can you take oh the baby for a few minutes? Come here. Come here, you big fuzzy idiot. 
Simba is about to go into his bi-weekly very bad 48 hours <laughs> because Dan has chemo tomorrow and for 48 hours after chemo he has to wear like a pump that he has oh. to wear on like a fanny pack for anti-nausea drugs. Mm. So Simba can't sit on him. Oh. Because we can't have I'm him like just dis- disconnecting the line or gnawing on it or whatever. And he is just beside himself for 48 hours until that pump comes off and he can sit on Dan. You're okay, bro. Don't you want to go? You want I gotta to go. Th- I gotta go yell at mom. <sighs> Goodbye. You go. I got stuff to tell her. Apparently, he's very interested in what she's doing in there. All right. So we have all had this moment when you're driving along, or or you're just in the middle. You have an idea, a just a crazy thought comes in your head and it goes away just as quickly. You're like, I could jump off that bridge. Yeah. You don't do it. But you're just yeah. like, yeah, I, I could I could just jump right off that bridge if I wanted to. I just go. Well. <laughs> Grady, good lord. Mom. <laughs> Louisiana man arrested after jumping into river from interstate bridge stranded in traffic. Now this is a freaking saga, this dude. The video though. <laughs> Wait, wait, yeah, they got this dude on video. Here we go. Let's let's have a look. There we go. Goodbye. Wow. <laughs> what the fuck? They're all chickens. <laughs> Jimmy, his name is Jimmy Jennings. So Louisiana Jimmy made, Jennings. made a decision that could have been deadly. Instead, it got him in trouble with law enforcement. Jimmy Jennings of Lafayette is seen on video jumping from Interstate 10 into the Butler Rose on Friday. Um, Jennings told he, he told the he told the reporters he got the idea while he was stranded in standstill traffic due to a 10 car pileup. So already emergency workers are having to deal with a whole bunch of horrible right, shit. And you're just going to abandon your car. When I hit the water, my shoulder went up. I kind of hurt my shoulder. But I started swimming. I couldn't Service get back. tension is a thing, guys. I couldn't get back to the bank because the current was way too strong. Um, the jump set off an hours long search for Jennings. I stayed in the water for probably about I had a watch on. I looked at it for probably two and a half to three hours. I thought I was going to die, but God saved me. God doesn't have time for your dumb ass, Buford. Like, the only reason God saved your ass is because St. Peter didn't want to process your shit. Yeah. Um, he eventually, like, nope, nope, nope. Leave him down there. He eventually found himself on land again. Jennings spent approximately an hour on an ATV trying to find his way back. He then realized he was on an island. Oh, my God. So <sighs> found a house and tried locating anyone for help. He also found a boat and took it around to get back to civilization. Found. You stole a boat and an ATV. Yeah. Did he also liberate the ATV? Yeah, right. Like he, he just went around stealing shit? This is not like, this is not a fucking Fortnite game, okay? Right. You can't they're just not, they're look not at loot drops. No. That's people's stuff. I was walking and heard officers come behind me with their guns and told me to put my hands up. But I couldn't since I hurt my shoulder from the fall. They had their guns on me. They were telling me to get on the ground. These guys sound like Forrest Gump. I hurt my shoulder from the fall. They had their guns on me. They were telling me to get on the ground. I got on the ground, listened to them, and they put me in handcuffs. This man shouldn't be driving. Like, I've been frustrated sitting in traffic before, sure. We've all thought about doing like the fucking REM video where we just all abandon our cars and wander right. off. Right. We've all thought about it. You don't do it. You certainly don't jump in a fucking river. Ron is like, can I keep him? Jesus, you put that idiot back right back where you found him. Yeah. Like I did once pull over in traffic because I was in a snowstorm <clears throat> and I kind of pulled over and took a nap. Not thinking about the fact that it did not stop snowing. No. And then I had to get out and clean off my car 
because you were buried. And had some trouble getting off the shoulder. Yeah, because you were buried. But I still didn't do this. No, it's it's you. you I, I swear to God, I just he sounds like he sounds like fucking Forrest Gump. Yeah. I just thought it might be faster to swim. My shoulder went up. I kind of hurt my shoulder, but I started like, swimming. Have we not all seen that episode of Mythbusters by now? Mm. That surface the surface tension, tension will fucking kill you, yep. even if you drop a sledgehammer first. Yep. It's fucking... You asshole. Because now they, they got to take the time away from the fucking 10 car pileup because you did this shit. And that person gets to drive. Where are your seatbelts? Well, speaking of that person gets to drive, our last one this week, um, I'm going to preface by saying no one was hurt or badly hurt. Um, but holy shit. Um... Surface tension can be removed with soap, not in a river. <laughs> Surface tension can be re removed with soap, not in a fucking river. What's your ass gonna do? Jump off the, the, the squirt a bottle of Dawn in front of you? Like, are, you gonna, are you just gonna wear a backpack of Dawn everywhere you go? <laughs> Arrested in McDonald's drive thru after dragging officer with stolen truck in Worcester. It's Worcester, yeah. Massachusetts. Wor Worcester. 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 All those letters in the middle, they don't fucking matter. It's Massachusetts. Worcester. Worcester. Okay. okay. No, not uh, Worcester. 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 Okay. Yeah. That's, and that's, that's an outfit there. Oh, boy, howdy. That is an outfit that says, I didn't plan to leave the house today, but I've committed to it. Police have arrested a woman who allegedly dragged an officer with a stolen pickup truck during a chase Tuesday morning. Officers fine. Officers were called to Lake Avenue to report of a stolen uh, Raymond James restoration pickup truck. Spoke to the owner, said he saw a woman climb into his truck and drive off. So you stole in a business truck. We've talked about this before. Officers started pursuing the truck, which was equipped with GPS. We talked about this last week. You weren't here, but any vehicle that's got any sort of big writing on the door, that's got a GPS in it. That represents somebody's investment. They're going to find you. Um, the driver later identified as 38-year-old Joanna Goodell. Um, she was pulled over before taking off again. I know he's gone. <laughs> Gardell allegedly weaved her way into oncoming traffic on Main Street when she struck a van. Two detail officers then approached the stolen truck to try and pull her out, but officers say Gardell backed up the truck at high speed and struck a cruiser behind her. In the process, she knocked down one of the detail officers and briefly dragged them. Officer in question was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries, said to be doing okay. Gardell was taken into custody... When she pulled into the drive through Lane McDonald's to order food. In a truck that is smashed into a van and backed into a cruiser. So you stole a truck. <clears throat> you hit a bunch of cars. You dragged a cop. I mean, I understand where that would work up an appetite. But you can't go to McDonald's. You have burgers at home. Well, you know, McDonald's. They're doing the sodas now. It's one dollar for any size. You can get the really big one if you want. It's just a dollar. <sighs> she was taken into custody. Officers approach her there and attempt to arrest her when they say she intentionally struck one of their cruisers, went off the road, and got the vehicle stuck in some nearby mulch. She's facing a dozen charges, including failure to stop for police, operating to endanger, leaving the scene of an accident, two counts of assault and battery by means of a dangerous weapon, Use motor vehicle without authority. And you did all this for what? I don't. Did you? Did you really have to go to McDonald's? That you could walk. There is a McDonald's near you. If they all right. If you were in America, at any spot in America, I could just drop you into the country, any latitude and longitude. 
there's a McDonald's within walking distance. You are at least an hour away on foot from a fucking McDonald's. There's a fucking McDonald's in Death Valley, I bet you. There ain't nothing else around. There's fucking vultures and shit. There's a fucking McDonald's out there. I promise your ass. McDonald's is on Uber Eats. They'll just bring it to you. I'm kind of impressed. She, she smashed that truck into multiple vehicles and just kept on going. And then stopped for breakfast. <clears throat> McGriddles are good. Like, we've all gone to the drive-thru and we probably shouldn't. We've all... Uh, I don't. I shouldn't say we've all. I have definitely been an asshole that rolls into work ten minutes late with an iced coffee, and it's like, man, the traffic was crazy. <laughs> but no, Tara, the, the McGriddles, they, they bake the the, the syrup. The oh, ma- the, those are those are the God. sandwich. They've got maple syrup baked right yeah, into the muffin. Those are fucking so. legit, but not when you're being chased by the cops. <laughs> Grand Theft McAuto Retro. Okay, yeah, that's. <laughs> I think that's pretty much it for the show tonight, for the for the show this week. You're going to have to forego the McGriddle until your star rating goes down. So, all right, the first thing we learned this week is you don't don't steal the truck from McDonald's. It's it's McDonald's. Shit people will do for McDonald's, dude. Like, I like McDonald's. I admit, I, I, I fully acknowledge that it is shit. Yes, it like, is. It's tasty shit. <laughs> I'm not going to, like, pull a gun or steal a truck like the shit people do for McDonald's. <sighs> We've learned just because you can jump in the river doesn't mean you should. If all of your friends jumped off the bridge, would you? Okay, yes, I guess you would. <laughs> he's the guy he's the guy when the if your friend jumped off a bridge would you jump he's the guy your mom was talking about who, yeah. your friend who jumped off the that's the he's guy the reason you have to hear that from your mom we've learned that if you're in trouble with the police you can't just distract them with another call street smarts <laughs> throw you your keys go get, hey, go get it <laughs> that doesn't work on the um, we've learned it, once you've stolen something, you can't, d- don't take it back. They're not going to be like, oh, thank you. We'll get this folded up and put back on the rack. You're like, where's the rest of the shit? <sighs> we've learned that in a time when th- probably one of the few times in history when it's perfectly cool to be disguising your face. Don't do crime without a disguise. It's cool right now. You've got a limited window right now to do crime with a mask. I mean, not me, because I still have this. It's just like they're burning a golden opportunity. I know. Like, one of the few times in history you can walk down the street with a fucking full face mask, bandana, put your hair under a baseball cap, and everybody's like, hi, how you doing? Nothing suspicious here. nobody's going to ask you any questions. Nope. Um, we, we've learned that, uh, and finally, we, we've learned your crotch and gunpowder are not friends. It's not like chocolate and peanut butter. You got gunpowder in my groin. That's the end of the commercial. That that is yeah. It's there's screaming and crying involved too. Yeah, but. 